So, I know what you're going to say. Everyone's played Minecraft. I know, I get it. And I know I'm supposed to be reviewing horror games here, but hear me out for a second. Minecraft is such a massive game that delivers on so many elements that you can kind of approach it in any way you want. And in this case, as a horror game, it sort of lives and dies on its atmosphere and its game mechanics. I mean, if you're not convinced... Minecraft is sort of a game that you have to do whatever you want with it. As you can see, I'm trapped inside by scary... I guess it's just ducks now. Or chicken. Now it's creepers. Uh, yeah, so while we're trapped in our house until daylight comes, let's talk a little bit about Minecraft, the game itself. It, it, it's a game that you're supposed to make what you want of it. You have to do... You play the game of Minecraft that you want to play, and because it's, it's such a massive sandbox game, and you can do pretty much whatever you want. As you can see, I've lowered the draw distance significantly, so that I can get the best out of making the game sort of, sort of a little bit more like a horror game, because you can't really see what's on the horizon, and things get a little bit foggy when you do that, especially in the winter areas. And so, because I'm doing what I want with this game, because I'm, I'm building whatever weird, like, palace or monument to how cool I am, I am, it, it makes the game about me, and so it accentuates engagement. Basically, everything I do in this game is for myself, and so it really helps build on the first-person character and the generic -y character dude that has, that you control. And ultimately, it just makes the choices relevant to you. And in making those choices relevant to you, it, it increases the engagement of what Minecraft does best, which is paranoia and atmosphere. As, as you can hear, the random sounds outdoors. So, yeah, that's basically it. Let's see if we can go outside. Yeah. Seems like it. The creeper seems to have wandered away. What? Oh god! There's a creeper-sized hole in the ground. So, let's let's talk a bit about the mechanics of progression. As you can see, I'm wielding a diamond sword right now. Uh, I started off with a wooden sword at the beginning of this video, but I got chased into my home by a horde of zombies, spiders, and a creeper. If you want to do anything in this game, you're going to need to progress. And to progress, you're going to need materials to build whatever it is you end up wanting to build. And how you extract those materials is part of what drags you into the game, and ultimately down into the mines. Before we even get looking at the atmosphere in the underground, there's the whole night and day aspect of the game to look at. When you start a game, and obviously I've been playing for a little bit, there's it's sunny out, there's really nothing to worry about. It's pretty happy. But as time goes on, and slowly the night starts to fall, monsters start spawning randomly everywhere in the darkness, coming for you. And so you've got to get the things together necessary to be able to go into the underground. One of those things is food you get from ducks and stuff. And as long as you're up top, food is everywhere. But when you go into the mines, there's really none to be found. So you have to stock up first. Another thing is coal. See, the mines are dark. There's really nothing down there. Here, I'll, I'll show you a clip of what it looks like. See? Here I am mining. What the fuck is that? It's a large portion of the game is basically this. But as you improve and get better... 
picks, it starts going faster. But generally, eventually you'll, you'll break out into a dungeon or something without light, without the ability to see, or keep monsters from spawning out of the darkness, because remember, that's where they come from. So they could really show up at any point right now. There's coal! And this is part of what you need in order to progress further in the game, is coal, so that you can light up the underground. Alright, now that we've got our coal and our food and we're ready to go to the mines, let's talk a little bit about health and hunger, because they both add a little bit of urgency to the game. Now, as long as you're well fed, you can run, your health regens, and really there's no problem. But as you start running out of health, slowly you start losing capability. Uh, first off, your health stops regening, uh, then you lose the ability to run, and eventually you start starving. And as you start starving, you start losing health, and then you die. And dying in this game is pretty terrible. Dying sucks for one particular reason, because of the items that you're carrying on you. As you want to progress throughout the game, you need to get better and better items to get there. So let's start with what you have. You start with wood, because wood is everywhere, and it's really easy to find. And then you progress to stone using the pick. And then stone gets you iron, and iron gets you diamond. And diamond basically kicks all of the ass. And you're going to want that durability and damage when you go into, say, an abandoned mine, or a system of caves, or hell itself, because that's actually an option. Um, then, of course, there's always the ender dragon, but we're not really going to talk about him. Now the point is, in order to progress up the tree of badassery, you need to make choices to go further into the randomly generated unknown. Oh look, redstone. I don't want redstone. That's part of it though. It's randomly and constantly generated. There's no clearing out a place. There's no for good, because un unless you're willing to invest in a ridiculous number of torches, there's always going to be darkness for creatures to spawn in and crawl out of. You never know what's going to be in the next area. Or what's waiting for you on your way back, unless you did your torchy diligence. Did I? Damn it, 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 damn it. The game warns you, of course, with groans of monsters and the glow of dripping lava, because that's right what's on the other side. Now, if I wasn't paying attention to those tiny pixels, I probably would have tunneled right into the lava and died. And that's pretty much the atmosphere, though. The sound of lava and the groan of monsters, and even the occasional music comes and doesn't seem to be around right now. Here's a perfect example of the music. It's sort of haunting, isn't it? Almost beautiful, but creepy as the darkness falls and the skeletons attack. Fuck. You can always hear there's more out there in the woods. And Atmosphere is pretty much the best claim to, fa claim to being a horror game that Minecraft has. The air fills with strange specks in the tunnels, the music quiet and unnerving, and even the sound of footsteps can be ominous. These dark, poorly lit passages. Well, let's not forget that horrible creeper hiss, right before the bastard kamikazes you with his green nitro sponge cake ass into you or whatever delicate, important structure you were working on. And that's the thing, you're never quite safe, ever, 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 ever. Even at the apex of the game, with monster traps everywhere, and diamond sword, and walls made out of fucking brick, you can still have a kamikaze sponge come and destroy your fortress. And unless you want the whole thing to be covered head to toe in torches, there's always going to be the threat of monsters. But even if you hunker down in your house forever, then the game's kind of done its job, hasn't you? It's made, it's made you afraid. It's given you the feeling of safety, but in a tense and conditional way. And there's always something to lose. Losing, that's the biggest part of this game. Everything in Minecraft represents an investment of time that you've made, or even just luck on your part. Especially Diamond, which is pretty much like 90% luck. Or 90% time and 10% luck. <clears throat> so when you're decked out in enchanted diamonds and you're covered in gear, and you've spent all this time grinding, the things you have on you are super valuable. But while you may be more powerful, it also means you have more to lose. The thing is, you know that. Sometimes you'll stumble across, stumble across a massive underground complex of used mines, 
or even just a tunnel or a cave full of stuff. And you want to go through it, but you know the farther you go, the more stuff you'll have on you. And the more ret more stuff you'll have to lose, and the more chances you'll have to lose that stuff. There's always going to be a creeper, or a lava flow, or a skeleton to can hit you with an arrow and knock you into the lava flow, as I'm showing here. Or I guess you could always try knocking a skeleton into the lava flow. But it's always there, and it's ever-present. The harder the area, the more valuable the stuff you'll need to survive in it, and the more you'll have to lose. It, it makes you nervous. It's tense. Let's talk for a little bit about the enemies in this game. There's the creeper, the paranoia-inducing homewrecker. Zombies and skeletons, as usual. There are spiders and spider nests with spiderlings that can wreck your shit no matter how well-geared you are, believe me, I know. Then there's pig zombies, flamethrowers, slenus endermen, I mean endermen, uh, the occasional golem, bandits, floating bomber squid heads, uh, and wolves. I mean, any of them, under the right circumstances, can kill you, even if you're the best armed player in the game. Even this lava pit, I mean, it's sort of innocuous looking, but if you fuck up, or you get knocked into it, your gear goes with you, and then everything that you're carrying is gone. So, if you've worked forever to get iron picks and iron armor, and you're running through this mine, and you end up tripping into a lava flow, you're gone for good, and everything you were carrying on you. But as long as you're careful, and you use the shift key to walk, you shouldn't have any problem. Providing the monsters don't come out of nowhere. So that's pretty much it. That's all I have to say um, about Minecraft as a horror game. Just its atmosphere and it's paranoia, and it's engagement. And you'll have to play the game to really get it, because it's a game that sucks you in, and you'll, you'll get a better feel for what I'm talking about after you've been burned a few times by lava pits or creepers, and after you've sort of felt the eerie feel of... Even that, even just those little charm bells when you collect experience, it's off-putting. And you'll see what I mean. I recommend you pick up this game, like 100%. If you haven't played Minecraft, give Minecraft a try. Unless you have some kind of horrible addictive, addictive personality, and then I won't be held responsible for your need to go to rehab. So then don't pick up this game. But do, because it's really good. Um, also, there's a massive mod community out there, and there's tons of mods that improve this as a horror game, that add extra monsters, and adds more to do. So give it a shot. Play Minecraft, and enjoy the atmosphere, because that's really the only way you can see it, is simply by playing it. Thank you very much. I've been Trivial Punk once more, and this has been Minecraft. Ooh. So I'm giving Minecraft a 4 out of 5 on engagement. It's great, but the graphics kind of pull you out of it. Minecraft gets a 5 out of 5 on gameplay, just because it's so goddamn much fun, and because of the way the mechanics pull you all the way down to hell. It also gets a 6 out of banana on atmosphere, and a Tarantino out of wombat on replay value.